Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're going to relive some of the best bloopers and uncontrollable laughter brought on by some of Hollywood's biggest stars. And we're starting with all the times Bill Hader broke the cast on SNL. Based on the novel Push by Sapphire. <laughs> Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the funniest times Bill Hader made somebody else break character on this sketch comedy show. The light was just lighting up <laughs> Number 10. Weekend Update. Stefan's Farewell. Who knew that a character send-off would be so emotional? But I've met someone else and he's a lot like you, except he likes me for me and we are getting married by Seth Meyers. Uh, well. The original ending to Stefan's arc is a dramatic conclusion for a beloved character. It's also a chance for Weekend Update host Seth Meyers and Bill Hader's character to finally come together as a couple. Get ready for Anderson Cooper, 360. After a slew of quirky cameos from the likes of Anderson Cooper, the skit leads towards a happy ending for the duo. The send-off ends in the studio as Hader and Myers get choked up. It's one of the few times that they both break character for the sketch, but this time it's because they're bringing real emotions with them to the segment. Number 9. Weekend Update. James Carville on Gun Control. Turning into the political strategist, Bill Hader transforms James Carville into a cartoonish guest on Weekend Update. The character makes fun of his own appearance and even throws in some extra mannerisms for good measure. I mean, if this guy can walk out of a gun store without answering some questions, <laughs> something has gone wrong. I mean, they make me answer five questions at the deli. <laughs> It's fun to watch, but really hard to keep a straight face during the craziest moments. Seth Meyers easily breaks multiple times trying to keep Carville on track. And don't get me wrong, Seth, I like ghosts. You do? You like ghosts? Yeah. My Grammy Carville is a ghost who never leaves my side. Ain't that right, Grammy? Hader takes the role even further as he uses his surroundings and even brushes up against his co-star. Naturally, this gets Myers giggling again in a great showcase for a hilarious performance. And I'd sneak in. Now, how would you sneak in? Oh, I had Graham and Carville go through the mail slot and unlock the door from the other side. <laughs> He's a ghost. Number 8. Weekend Update. Seth's Farewell. As if to return the favor of sending Stefan off in style, Bill Hader came back in character to help celebrate Seth Meyers' final weekend update appearance. Couple friends want to stop by and say something. <laughs> the entire segment is filled with laughs, tears, and respect as multiple people show up to honor the longtime host. Hader as Stefan gets perhaps the largest reaction as everyone tries not to cry. You like the sting of SNL. Wait, why am I like the sting of SNL? Because it takes you 12 years to finish. Okay. <laughs> With the likes of Cecily Strong and Amy Poehler there to help, Hader gives his friend one last salute in the Stefan role. It's a moment that's less about laughs and more about the raw emotion of the scene. And like a regular cable box, it goes down all the time. Oh, step off. <laughs> Number seven, Kissing Family. Brecken brings his boyfriend home. For anyone that knows about this family, they'll likely remember how affectionate they are. This sketch is no different as a reunion prompts lots of kisses and other ridiculous behavior. Hey, pick on some on your own size. Get over here. Hey. <laughs> Fred Armisen's character tries to make a speech but accidentally hits his scene partner, Bill Hader, with his hand. The mistake and Hader's reaction get Armisen to giggle as he tries to finish his monologue. Everyone the, loving everyone in the world. Yeah, that's right. Okay? Right. <laughs> and, and that's important. Totally important. With the laughter starting, it's almost impossible to recover for the remainder of the sketch. The last string of kisses make the co-stars laugh again as they come face to face once more. <laughs> Number 6. Weekend Update, Stefan on St. Patrick's Day. 
On certain occasions, Bill Hader has returned to host SNL and reprised his role as Stefan. This also means that he has new Weekend Update presenters to work alongside. Connor, Percy, it's <laughs> nice to be here. So, thank you, Stefan. So For this version of the skit, the crazy correspondent bounces jokes off Michael Che and Colin Jost. Roasting the two with off-color lines, the character makes them laugh with his absurd humor. Moonlight, La La Land. <laughs> <laughs> Hader proves that he can also work with anyone while in the classic wardrobe and haircut. Making his co-stars chuckle at his odd club details, the comedian never ceases to make anyone around him happier. Wait, isn't a closer look Seth's thing? Oh, Seth and I are versatile. Some nights I do it and he's under the desk. <laughs> it's Stefan, everyone! Number 5. Hollywood Dish with Scarlett Johansson Making fun of press junkets, Hollywood Dish puts Bill Hader and Kristen Wiig together as a pair of eager journalists. They question Scarlett Johansson with a number of softball questions until they try to get more juicy details out of her. It was magical. You know, I want to do it all over again, you know? I'm sorry, is there something wrong? Oh, no, 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 you're, you're doing fine. We just don't want to ruin your audio. Yeah, yeah, we can't make sounds when you talk. Uh, With each question, the duo's reaction also becomes more and more crazy. This prompts Hader to do a spit take directly into Wig's face. Naturally, this breaks her up before she has to deliver her next line. <laughs> I, I just don't watch a lot of reality television. <laughs> There's also a bowl on her head that makes it even harder for the comedian to keep her cool. Considering how messy this scene gets, it's not difficult to imagine that even a veteran would break under the circumstances. You, <laughs> you have great skin. What is your secret? <laughs> Number four, Ronaldo and Alexi. This might be the most famous train wreck from Bill Hader's time on the show. <laughs> oh, red wine. And you know what the label's saying? Van Buren is saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Van Buren is saying. You got the same oh, thing? Yeah, I got the same thing from him. Never making it to air, this dress rehearsal performance is a beautiful encapsulation of his chemistry with Fred Armisen. They both play doormen with outrageous accents that love to chat up the residents. When Armisen tries to tell a story, he starts to break down with laughter. The light was just lighting up. <laughs> so Santa Claus was using his brain. You like that story? <laughs> This quickly derails the sketch and keeps both performers chuckling for most of the runtime. Hader doesn't fare well with his own Christmas tale either, almost breaking Vanessa Bayer along with his other scene partners. Even if there aren't a ton of jokes, there's definitely a wild energy that's contagious enough to get both guys to crack up. The kids, they take him out into the sun and Frosty's like, wait, 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 no, 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 I made snow. Don't do this, I was good right here. And then he melts and he dies, the end. Number 3. Girlfriend's Game Night What should have been a normal game night turns into a wonderfully awkward discussion about pregnancy. You couldn't ask for a better premise, but somehow the writers make it even better with the inclusion of Bill Hader's character. The older man Horace has a wheelchair and seems to run into everything. Oh yeah! <laughs> My cards are terrible! Oh yeah! <laughs> oh, yeah. Making for a beautiful disaster, the chair sets up an accidental gag where Hader wheels into the table and his co-stars. Slow, Horace. Horace, slow, Horace. The furniture and performers start moving across the set as they stifle their laughter, hiding behind an amused Cecily Strong. Hader can't contain himself as he realizes his mistake. You should be ashamed of yourselves. <laughs> Number 2. Weekend Update – Stefan on Spring Break During his earliest years as Stefan, Bill Hader developed great chemistry with Weekend Update host Seth Meyers. This back and forth makes for some killer reactions from both performers. If you liked Russell Crowe and Les Miserables, you might want to hear Jasper the Gorilla pass a kidney stone. <laughs> This place sounds fancy. Trying to help people on spring break, the character goes off on some typically hilarious jokes that include a reference to the film Precious. Hader's reaction to the line is enough for him and Myers to cover their mouths. Based on the novel Push by Sapphire. <laughs> 
Considering that the words often get changed at the last minute, it's safe to assume that this helped to cause both comedians to lose it. It's also such a chaotic script that it's amazing they even make it through the segment without falling over laughing. If you go with me, you can join my five-timers club. What do I have to do five times? <laughs> For a weekend update on the future Mrs. Stefan Myers. Good night! Number one, the Californians. Karina returns. In one of the most popular segments from his tenure on SNL, Bill Hader always shines as one of the soap stars on The Californians. He also found plenty of time to break and make others do the same. What did I just see going on here? <laughs> I don't know, Stuart. I'm not confused. Starting with a ridiculous plot, this particular version concerns Kristen Wiig's character returning and revealing her true self. A series of crazy voices and pronunciations follow as Hader can't keep it together. This sends his co-stars into a fit of laughter. What if I'm just quiet? <laughs> <laughs> so get out of here! Just get on the five, go up to Magic Mountain, get on Riddler's Revenge and never get off! Not only does Wig lose it, but Fred Armisen also cracks under the absurdity of this story. The entire scene plays out like an inside joke with friends who can't stop giggling. Well, I hope you're all enjoying your agave ma margaritas. <laughs> I met them with Puel Agave that I bought at the farmer's market at the Grove. Are your sides aching yet? Well, the laughs are only going to continue because up next are the best TV show bloopers of all time. Dude, what's all that stuff you have? It's not... <laughs> Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the most hilarious blunders from beloved TV shows. The hell does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> Number 20, Celebrity Comebacks, Parks and Recreation. So Leslie and I have come up with the theme for the campaign relaunch rally. The Comeback Kid. If you watch the bloopers, you'll see that the making of Parks and Recreation wasn't as clean and innocent as the show itself. In one of the more hilarious outtakes, Leslie and Anne are listing some fictional characters and celebrities who made major comebacks. Chris Pratt then improvises a killer line, using the term comeback as a crude pun in relation to Kim Kardashian. The joke itself is fantastic, as is Pratt's casual delivery of it, but what makes this blooper are the reactions. Aubrey Plaza smacks him on the shoulder, Nick Offerman doubles over in laughter, and Rashida Jones simply face palms. <laughs> oh, they gotta make the rap part. Number 19, Plums, Eastbound and Down. Get Will Ferrell on your set and it's bound to be an unproductive workday. Clad in sunglasses and a white wig, Ferrell goes on a wild tangent about his juicy plums. Funnily enough, he's the first to break, laughing at his own ridiculous lines. All the while, everyone's saying... <laughs> Meanwhile, Craig Robinson stands beside him giggling away clearly unable to keep a straight face. But this is just the beginning. The actors eventually lose all composure, and Farrell can barely get through a sentence without smirking or breaking out into laughter. The director eventually yells cut, his actors having clearly been taken by a fit of the giggles. I can feel the tension in the air. <laughs> <laughs> Number 18, The One Who Laughs, Breaking Bad. A guy opens his door and gets shot, and you think that of me? No. I am the one who knocks. The inverse to Parks and Recreation, the set of Breaking Bad was far lighter and funnier than the show itself. The bloopers are full of actors breaking and having the time of their lives, even while filming the darkest of scenes. Walt's The One Who Knocks speech is arguably the most iconic scene of the series, but it certainly didn't come through on the first take. Anna Gunn gets through her lines perfectly, and Brian Cranston turns on cue with a suitably surprised look on his face. But for some reason, he never says his follow-up lines and simply smirks and hangs his head. <laughs> <laughs> That scene is Emmy-worthy stuff, yet here's Cranston acting like he's on the set of a comedy. Number 17, The Douche Zombie, How I Met Your Mother. At 
acting like a zombie has to be pretty embarrassing, and Jason Siegel finds that out firsthand. In this scene, the gang is ganging up on Ted because he got back in contact with a problematic ex. Lily mentions that she turned Ted into a douche zombie, prompting Marshall to do an impression of said douche zombie. Dad, she turned you into one of her douche zombies. <laughs> I want to eat you. <laughs> In the blooper, Siegel gets out five words before laughing. Well, more like four. That fifth word came out as more of a squeak. Siegel and the rest of the cast then get a major case of the giggles, with Siegel even crying and breaking out in a literal sweat. <laughs> Jason, you got tears in your eyes, honey. You gotta wipe it off. You're sweating. I know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Number 16. Whitney Houston is Dead? The League While more of a cult classic, this show stars some major names, including Mark Duplass, Nick Kroll, and Jason Manzukis. The latter two are at the heart of this darkly comedic blooper, which sees Manzukis grieving the late Whitney Houston. Rafi doesn't know that Houston has died, and acts surprised when he learns the truth from Rodney. R.I.P. What? <laughs> Everybody hates us. Come on. I know, I know. I'm sorry. We're so sorry, everybody. Kroll continuously breaks for Manzukis' exaggerated reaction, and the latter hilariously scolds him for it. Kroll eventually leaves his chair and goes to stand by the bookcase, mostly so he doesn't have to look at Manzukis. But this does not help, and the results are comedic gold. What? Oh, no! Oh, my God! Whitney's dead? Oh! Oh! How's my neck? I can hear you laughing at Number 15. Hitting the Egg, M.A.S.H. A revolutionary bit of television, M.A.S.H. is a hilarious medical comedy about surgeons in the Korean War. Alan Alda stars as protagonist Hawkeye Pierce, who in this scene is tasked with squashing an egg. In the completed scene, Alda simply smacks the egg inside the food tray. All right, that does it. The irresistible force is about to polish off the immovable object. It doesn't go as smoothly in this blooper. No, it's actually a complete mess. Alda accidentally hits the tray while moving to smack the egg, sending its contents flying everywhere. This causes Mike Farrell to fall to the ground in laughter, and he ends up taking the whole table with him. The irresistible force is about to polish off the immovable object. <laughs> the poor set decorator who had to clean that up. Number 14, riffing on Batman, Community. Since you're a big bat, can you turn into a tiny vampire? Anytime, anyplace. One of the sitcom's big draws is the friendship between Troy and Abed. And as this blooper proves, Danny Pudi and Donald Glover had just as much chemistry as their fictional counterparts. Pudi, dressed in a ridiculous Batman costume, is asked various personal questions by Glover. This entire bit was clearly improvised, as both the questions and answers are different every time. The two actors are having the time of their lives, and the camera just stands there and rolls as they riff on the bit. We're glad it did, because it resulted in blooper magic. Hey, can I, can I ask you something I always wanted to ask the real Batman? Yeah. Why are your movies so good? <laughs> Don't, it's not funny. Number 13, Caught in the Act, Extras. To be honest, we don't know how Ricky Gervais gets through a scene. As fans of his work will know, he's always laughing and acting the goof on set, especially with his creative partner, Stephen Merchant. In this scene from Extras, Andy Millman catches his agent in the act, resulting in a terribly awkward silence and a rather uncomfortable conversation. Gervais and Merchant had a heck of a time getting through this one, resulting in a brilliant string of bloopers. Right, hello. I'm. <laughs> Gervais's sets always seem like a good time, and we would have given anything to be there on that day. <laughs> Number 12, Blair Underwood, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. In the second season of this acclaimed cop comedy, Boyle takes everyone for a fun weekend at his ex-wife's beach house. Much to everyone's chagrin, Jake brings along the uncharismatic Holt. Ain't no party like a Captain Holt party, cause a Captain Holt party is a total surprise to everyone. Sensing a lucrative business opportunity, goofballs Scully and Hitchcock try to rope Holt into an offshore casino. Hitchcock asks Holt if Blair Underwood would be interested in being a spokesperson for the casino, causing Andre Brower to break and curse him out. You think Blair Underwood be, would be a good spokesperson for a floating casino? <laughs>
Brower's reaction makes the blooper, and Dirk Blocker can't help but laugh at his own silly suggestion. Number 11. Loco Lines – Modern Family While this long-running sitcom was full of great Emmy-winning actors, it was Sofia Vergara who stole the show as Gloria Delgado Pritchett. In this scene from Haley's 21st birthday, Vergara is tasked with saying the line, plus she was loco for loco puffs. Plus she was loco for loco puffs. <laughs> Why do you do not have that cereal? It's a tongue twister, and one made even more difficult for the bilingual Vergara. The Colombian actress attempts to say the line, but it comes out as a string of gibberish. The blunder is funny, but what makes this blooper are the hilarious reactions from everybody else. Blow, she was loco like polo, polo, polo. <laughs> <laughs> No one can believe what they just heard, and they all react in complete befuddlement. Even the crew can be heard laughing. Number 10. The Ballad of Roberta Bondar – Letterkenny A beloved Canadian comedy, Letterkenny has drawn acclaim for its colorful characters and fantastic scripts that keep the wordplay coming at a rapid clip. One of the show's best scenes is a seven-minute story about Canadian astronaut Roberta Bondar. Pull the space pants down. Sorry. I'm sorry. We'll get her. By the looks of the bloopers, this scene was almost impossible for Jared Kiso and Nathan Dales to get through. The two keep cracking up throughout the story, with Dales laughing off to the side and Kiso ruining his speech with fits of giggles. It was all too much for the director, who eventually called for a cut and a break. Good idea. Yeah. <laughs> Number 9. Betty White's Dating Profile – Hot in Cleveland Working with Betty White must have been a real treat. I signed up when my bender was over. <laughs> I signed up when my bender was over. <laughs> Not just for her professionalism, resulting in five primetime Emmys, but because she was so stinking funny. Hot in Cleveland was a late career surge for the iconic actress, in which she played a caretaker named Elka. In season two's Bad Bromance, Elka reveals that she's on a dating website under the name Bender Over. So named, of course, because she signed up after her bender was over. Duh! This line really tickled White, and it took her multiple takes to get right. At one point, she even starts slapping herself in a desperate attempt to knock the giggles out. It didn't work. I signed up on my... <laughs> I signed up on my <laughs> Number 8. Spanking – The Big Bang Theory Oh my! <laughs> Sorry. In the fish guts displacement, Amy lies about being sick and earns the ire of her boyfriend Sheldon. To punish Amy, Sheldon decides to spank her. Amy loves the idea, and she even plays some music to help get her in the mood. Of course, Sheldon doesn't understand. By all accounts, this was a horribly awkward scene to film, and you can tell by the reactions of Jim Parsons and Mayim Bialik. It seems especially hard for Parsons, who appears rather uncomfortable having to actually spank Bialik, who is draped across his lap. The poor guy keeps awkwardly laughing, and the time between spank and laugh gets hilariously shorter as the takes pile up. Action. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Number 7. Ashton Kutcher Bangs His Shins – That 70s Show Ashton Kutcher got his big break playing Michael Kelso, a lovable stoner doofus who is more than a little clumsy. It didn't take Kutcher long to prove himself a master of physical comedy. You know what else we should do? Not get any presents! <laughs> The show's 12th episode is a Christmas special, and Eric's older sister Lori comes to visit. She attracts the attention of Kelso, who excitedly leaps over the basement couch in order to speak with her. Kutcher did this stunt for real and ended up slipping on the blanket, sending his shins directly into the hard table. Lisa Robin Kelly clearly laughs at the real incident but remains in character, allowing the scene to continue as planned. Number 6. Danny Boy – Schitt's Creek The little Canadian show that could, Schitt's Creek earned wide acclaim throughout its run, with Catherine O'Hara winning the Emmy for Outstanding Lead Actress in a Comedy Series. Johnny. Hello, Bob. Moira. So good of you to come. John said we had no choice. 
In this wickedly awkward scene, O'Hara's Moira Shit is asked to sing Danny Boy at Carl's funeral. It's a hilarious moment, and we don't know how anyone kept a straight face throughout it. Indeed, the entire cast laughs in the middle of O'Hara's tune, with John Hemphill being the first actor to break. Ooh, Danny Boy, are you really going to let me see? I suppose Moira's extended intro was just too much to bear. Number 5. The Elephant Story – The Carol Burnett Show Her name may be on the marquee, but it's Tim Conway who steals the spotlight in this classic blooper. Elephant squash. <laughs> a wonderful variety show, this comedy had a little bit of everything, including outlandish stories about Siamese elephants. While filming a sketch called Mama's Family, Conway regales his castmates with an absurd tale that gets more and more farcical as it continues. The story leaves everyone in complete hysterics, both cast and audience members alike. Burnett was a consummate pro and was adamant that no one break during the tapings, but on this occasion, they just couldn't help themselves. We do not blame them one bit. They was uh, joined at the end. <laughs> Number 4. The Tools in Dennis's Trunk – It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia Dennis Reynolds has become increasingly creepy throughout the years and is now in full-blown serial killer territory. She rejected me! Me, Frank! Me! The coolest guy in the history of this goddamn school! Oh, they're all gonna pay! They're all gonna pay the ultimate prize! There is strong evidence of this in Season 7's The High School Reunion, which shows Dennis keeping the likes of duct tape, zip ties, and plastic gloves in his trunk. It's always hilarious when Glenn Howerton goes full rage mode, so we can only imagine how difficult it is to film these scenes. He keeps the other four chuckling throughout these bloopers, as they can't watch him get angry without cracking up. Their giggles eventually infect Howerton, and it's not long before even he can't keep his cool. What's all that stuff you're grabbing, dude? <laughs> <laughs> Number 3. David Schwimmer Plays the Bagpipes – Friends This sitcom is chock full of iconic moments, like Ross playing the bagpipes for his buddies. David Schwimmer plays the bagpipes himself – well, plays is a strong word – and his castmates can barely hold it together. Everyone breaks once Lisa Kudrow starts screeching along, with Jennifer Aniston putting her head back and Schwimmer being unable to continue. In fact, this scene was so much fun to shoot that even the finished version is not without flaws. In the episode itself, Aniston can be seen covering her face and giggling once Kudrow joins in, and at one point, she even glances directly into the camera. It's probably a miracle they got the scene done at all, so we'll take it. <laughs> Number 2. Michael's Plasma TV – The Office Dinner Party is often regarded as a classic Office episode, chock full of awkward humor and uncomfortable situations. In one scene, Michael proudly shows off his plasma TV and how it folds into the wall. A lot of people in the room, you need more space. Voila, right into the wall. Wow. This being Michael, the TV is the size of a tablet, folds maybe an inch into the wall, and is so small that he has to stand in front of it. It's a string of hilarious circumstances that had everyone in hysterics. This was the first episode filmed after the 2007 writer's strike, resulting in a giddy atmosphere on set. Carell says they're never going to finish this episode, and while they did, we don't exactly know how. We have two speakers. <laughs> what? Honey? Oh, Jesus. This is terrible. We'll never finish this episode. <laughs> Number 1. Elaine vs. Frank – Seinfeld This sitcom is packed with classic bloopers, most of them involving Julia Louis-Dreyfus. She clearly enjoyed working on the show, and it's often her who breaks first, usually at something that Michael Richards does or says. But it wasn't Richards who sent her off the deep end here. It was Jerry Stiller. What the hell does that <laughs> Let's go, let's go. <clears throat> Stiller himself never breaks, aside from the odd smirk. But Louis Dreyfus could not get through this scene if her life depended on it. She continuously chuckles at Stiller, finding his line delivery just about the funniest thing ever. And frankly, so do we. <laughs> <laughs> How Seinfeld managed to get made is just beyond us. 
Which of these did you find the funniest? Well, I thought it was so laughable at the time. <laughs> Okay, well, it's now time to take it to the legendary Saturday Night Live stage. As we take a look at the many, and I mean many times, a sketch broke the cast. No! You do not interrupt one of Gammy's stories! Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today, we're counting down our picks for the top 20 SNL sketches that broke the whole cast. Okay, <laughs> okay, please. For this list, we'll be looking at the best sketches from Saturday Night Live that were so funny, many or all of the cast members couldn't keep straight faces. Number 20, Cast List. This sketch, which was cut for time, sees a group of excited teens awaiting the posting of the Bye Bye Birdie cast list by their theater teacher, Will Ferrell's Mr. Koenig. I see the sharks are circling the boat. <laughs> oh my god, so funny, Mr. Koenig. <laughs> Shut up, Beth. The whole cast energy perfectly captures the theater kid wanting to know who gets which part energy of every high school ever. Mr. Koenig's imperious attitude and vague hints about who may or may not have gotten a part are also pitch perfect. Miles, would you kiss a girl with tongue if the role required it? I know your family is the difficult kind of Christian. However, when Farrell steps in front of the list to block it from view, practically everyone gets the giggles. Back up, please! Back up! Please! What are you doing? And they have a hard time shaking them through the rest of the sketch. We were already laughing, but seeing everyone lose it never fails to take us out. Number 19. Gap's Girls at the Food Court. The Gap Girls, played by Chris Farley, David Spade, and Adam Sandler, appear several times during the show. You guys have been watching too much court TV. I know. Have you been following the Mena Mendez trial? However, this occasion sees the trio frequently struggling to hide their laughter. Their use of 90s Valley Girl speak is hilarious throughout, but there are a few moments in particular that cause them to break. The first is after Farley drops the falsetto and tells Spade's character Christy to lay off of him about eating all the fries. I thought you were um, trying to lose weight. <laughs> lay off me, I'm starving! The next major break is when Sandler's Lucy gets emotional over Christy's boyfriend treating her badly. I hate to see this happen to you! You're my best friend! They may be interested in hot goss, but the Gap Girl's giggles are even hotter. Number 18. New Military Weapon The United States military is always looking for the next big thing, and this sketch sees a bizarre new asset that they're developing. My orders in heading this project were clear. Make America the technological leader in the battlefield. Host Simu Liu plays a major who reveals the weapon to a senator and a cabinet secretary, Doghead Man. It's literally a dog's head and neck on a man's body. You put a dog's head on a human being's body? A uh, dog's head and neck, ma'am. The real pup's adorable, and its shenanigans lead everyone, particularly Cecily Strong and Mikey Day. Not only would dog head man have taken Bin Laden out, he would have eaten him too. Who's the scientist in charge of it to break at some point. While the moral and ethical implications are horrifying, as a sketch, the results are undeniably cute and funny. Number 17, Cork Soakers. At a winery in Italy, a group of tourists are shown around. This is where the final step in the bottling process happens, where we prepare all the corks <clears throat> for all the bottles of Brunello that you saw earlier. Any questions? The two owners, played by Jimmy Fallon and Horatio Sands, introduce them to a special part of the process, cork soaking. The suggestive sounding words are used liberally throughout for one of the most innuendo-laden sketches ever made. As we are like it to say, Cork soakers are born, not made. <laughs> Amazingly, Fallon isn't the biggest offender here. Instead, it's host Janet Jackson, who can barely make it through her lines without breaking, though she's not alone. So does your wife like soaking... <laughs> soaking cork? And given the elaborate and hysterical puns, we really can't blame her. We'd be real cork soakers if we did. Number 16, Scared Straight. This recurring sketch always features plenty of actors breaking. It sees Kenan Thompson as Lorenzo McIntosh, a criminal attempting to convince others not to engage in big-time offenses, usually joined by the episode's host. On your feet! Now sit down! 
However, Thompson's up-close and personal approach, as well as Lorenzo's use of movie plots, frequently leads his audience laughing instead of being frightened. Plus, some of the hosts being the opposite of hardened criminals makes it hilariously tough to take anything they say seriously. The Betty White installment certainly comes to mind. You're following a lion, a tin man, and a scarecrow down a yellow brick road. Because this here, this right here, this is real. Okay. Needless to say, the cast breaking always makes the sketch 1,000 times better. Number 15, Dr. Beeman's Office, Test Results. One of Will Ferrell's lesser-known characters is Dr. Beeman. What do you mean you're my wife? <laughs> okay, if you're my wife, what's our cat's name? Mr. Stitches. Damn, you're good. Here, this bizarre, alleged medical practitioner sees a couple, Tom and Kathy, who are eager to hear about their recently born son. Rather than tell them immediately, Beeman rambles on the phone, insults them, and even claims their child is a witch. Now I'm going to tell you this quickly, and it's probably going to sting a little bit. <laughs> Your son's a witch. What? Oh my god, no! It's incredibly absurd, even for SNL standards. However, it isn't until Tim Meadows comes in as consultant Dr. Stephen Poop that the actors break. His performance of the robot completely sends Molly Shannon and Will Ferrell. That'll be $5,000. Good day to you both. <laughs> what the hell was that? <laughs> Look, I couldn't think of anything good. Can you blame them? Chris Parnell keeps it together, though. He's no Von Druk, whatever that means. Number 14, Girlfriend's Game Night. In this sketch, a group of girlfriends get together for a game night. However, one of them, Jeannie, brings her much older elderly husband, Horace, with her. Hi, hi, sorry we're late, it's been a chaotic week. <laughs> Horace's sons are suing me again. The near expressionless old coot is played to perfection by Bill Hader, and things get extra awkward when his special medication kicks in, prompting Jeannie to attempt to capitalize on it right there. Jeannie, it's here now. Oh, it is? Like right now? Oh, that's inconvenient. Amazingly, the actors largely keep it together through all of this. But once Hater has to move Horace's wheelchair around, bumping into the table, pretty much everyone breaks. It's the kind of silly thing that can only happen in a live performance, and the actors all find it just as funny as we do. You know what? You should be ashamed of yourselves. This one is... <laughs> Number 13, Career Day. There have been several school career day sketches over the years, but only one of them has Adam Driver as Abraham H. Parnassus. Greetings, children. <laughs> I'm Mordecai's father. Hello, boy. The ancient oil tycoon gives a stirring speech on crushing your enemies to the kids and repeatedly demanding his son Mordecai to look at him. Look at me, boy. Look at your father. <laughs> look at me. <laughs> Mordecai? Pete Davidson, who plays Mordecai, often has difficulty fulfilling his request since he's too busy laughing. Some of the rest of the class and teacher also seemingly struggle to stay stone-faced at various points. And now you return her to us! <laughs> Driver's towering over-the-top performance is spectacular, so we can hardly blame the actors for breaking before they break for Capri Sun. Number 12, Stefan. Arguably Bill Hader's most iconic SNL character, Stefan became a frequent Weekend Update fixture. Are you okay? You seem different. I've had a weird few years. Okay. Although ostensibly charged with recommending destinations to tourists, Stefan instead lists off wild and often bizarre establishments, usually scripted by John Mulaney, who appears along Stefan on one occasion. These appearances are famous for Hader breaking. This place has everything. <laughs> Asbestos, lupus. <laughs> The magazines at Supercuts, Dan Cortez. <laughs> Him hiding his face behind his hands to conceal his laughter never gets old. Mulaney's last minute changes to the script often resulted in Hater hearing jokes for the first time as he said them, explaining his frequent laughter. Have you heard of Blackula the Black Dracula? Yes. <laughs> well, they have a Jewish Dracula. Oh. What's his name? Sidney Applebaum. Oh, okay. Stefan's appearances may often just feature hater breaking, though the anchors aren't immune, but the cumulative breaks are enough to earn him a spot on our list. Number 11, Extremely Stupid. 
This iconic sketch sees host Candace Bergen's Fern meet with her friend Lisa, played by Gilda Radner. I'm so thirsty I could drink a horse. Fern proceeds to mock Lisa for her malapropisms and decision to pour milk in her purse instead of drink it. However, Bergen then messes up a line herself, calling Radner by her own character's name. You're not too bright, are you, Fern? I mean... This makes Bergen lose it entirely, unable to contain her laughter as Lisa does a PSA in defense of stupid people. Radner largely does a great job staying collected, with Lisa's smile arguably helping her out. But Bergen is half the sketch's cast, so it counts. Extremely stupid people are discriminated against all the time. And I should know, and so should Fern, because we are... <laughs> Extremely stupid people. It just goes to show that whether you're extremely stupid or just play dumb on TV, you're bound to find this one funny. Number 10, Jeffries with Sean Hayes. This early 2000s sketch sees Sean Hayes and Jimmy Fallon as two workers at a fashion store called Jeffries. Look, we don't carry diesel. We work at Jeffries. We read Italian Vogue. It's our deal. I don't come to where you work and knock the corn dog out of your hand. Rather than assist their customers, the duo instead spends their time lobbing insults at their choice of clothes. Hi, um, I'm looking for a sweater for my boyfriend. <sighs> really? Well, if you want it to match your outfit, I suggest you try a Hallmark store. While Fallon gets the giggles at Horatio Sands' comebacks, both of them lose it when their supervisor, played by Will Ferrell, rolls up. Okay, you guys. <laughs> Hold on. And to be fair to them, if Farrell pulled up in that outfit and pulled out a cell phone that small, we'd have a hard time containing our laughter too. Number 9. The Lovas with Barbara and Dave. This entry in the recurring sketches featuring Roger and Virginia Clarvin, better known as the Lovas, sees the couple in a hot tub joined by a man named Dave and later by their friend Barbara Hernandez. Yes. yes, we had pulled over after a long Sunday drive. Roger led me to a clearing, laid me down upon a bed of fresh meadow yes. grasses. Like most of their scenes, this one has the couple speaking in bizarre accents, making wildly sexual small talk with a stranger. And of course, while Jimmy Fallon will laugh at the drop of a hat, the fact that Will Ferrell was reportedly doing things with his foot under the water probably didn't help Fallon stay in character. Dave. 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 David. <laughs> David. His laughter is infectious, and soon enough, the Lovas and Barbara are giggling too. And isn't laughter a true expression of love? Number 8. Matt Foley, Van Down by the River When a father and mother discover their children, Brian and Stacy, have been doing drugs, they hire Matt Foley, a motivational speaker, to talk to them. Enter Chris Farley at the top of his game. First off, I am 35 years old, I am divorced, and I live in a van down by the river. Foley motivates the kids by describing how horrible his own life is, with a particular emphasis on how he lives in a van down by the river. Gonna end up eating a steady diet of government cheese and living in a van down by the river. The larger-than-life Farley's over-the-top performance has both David Spade and Christina Applegate struggling not to laugh as he gets in their faces, lifts Spade up, and crashes into the coffee table. Oh, Matt's gonna be your shadow! Here's you, here's Matt, there's you, there! This sketch is the first of many Matt Foley appearances, and it will make you laugh whether you're in it or you live in a van down by the river. Number 7, Close Encounter. Another debut of a recurring sketch, this one sees a trio of alien abductees interviewed by scientists at the Pentagon. It's nuts, man. I mean, we're just small town buds who saw a UFO in the woods. I mean, now we're hanging out with the government. While the first two, played by Cecily Strong and host Ryan Gosling, describe a wonderful experience, the third, played by Kate McKinnon, had a different kind of abduction. And you, Miss Rafferty? Wow. 
What floor were you guys on? Her description of urinating in front of a bunch of gray aliens and the weird things they do to her has to be heard to be believed. Gosling especially is smiling throughout, though even the scientists, played by A.D. Bryant and Bobby Moynihan, are less than government professionals. Look, it wasn't my worst Wednesday night. <laughs> McKinnon's character may not have been dealing with the best of the best, but her performance here gives us a transcendent experience. Number 6. Lisa from Temecula At a birthday dinner for Shayna, the spotlight is quickly stolen by her sister, Lisa from Temecula. Lisa, we've heard so much about you. It's so nice to finally meet you. Mm-hmm. That's cute. But don't think I'm giving up the butt tonight. Along with her insistence that Paul, Pedro Pascal's character, is hoping for some butt, her order of an extra, extra well-done steak proves distracting for everyone. As actress Ego Wodum saws on a piece of meat, the table cartoonishly jumps around, spilling food and drink alike. But a few nights back, this, uh, this, dog, this dog followed me home. Come on, the table staying up. Pascal breaks first, as his character has a story to tell, but the rest of the table isn't far behind, including Wodum. Actually, <laughs> Okay. Much like Lisa's steak, the comedy here is extra well done, so they couldn't help but laugh. Number 5. Super Showcase Spokesmodels On this fake game show, a contestant, played by Vanessa Bayer, loses out on showcase prizes when she gets a question wrong. Well, the answer is nine. <laughs> nine. Not, not beef. I almost said nine. You said beef, which is wrong. Bill Hader's host has the showcase models Shonda and Vonda, played by Maya Rudolph and Kristen Wiig, show her what she didn't win. Bad news, Debra. You didn't win his and hers matching luggage by luggage guy. It's not luggage guy luggage. It's just a bunch of luggage from someplace. You ought to be the talk of baggage claim with luggage guy baggage. Shonda and Vonda's absurd accents make it difficult for Wig and Rudolph to get through their displays of various products made by ridiculous generic names with straight faces. That's not all! You'll be a real swinger with this! It's a nice matching golf club by Golf Club Guy. Four? <laughs> Wig having to drive a golf cart around adds even more hilarity, and Hater gets the giggles. To happen. Only Bayer keeps it together. Sounds like she could use some laughs by Laugh Guy. Number 4. Gus Chiggins, Old Prospector At a military briefing for the Afghanistan conflict, the soldiers are all puzzled during roll call when it becomes clear that one of them is an old prospector. Old Prospector. Here! The prospector, Gus Chiggins, proves distracting, given his old-timey sayings and numerous noisy pans. The group gets separated. Where's the rendezvous point? Oh! <laughs> That's easy. Tap a old boot hill, just follow the dry creek bed, <clears throat> but be careful, there's quicksand. Eventually, their commanding officer reveals that Gus is really a character actor. But that just raises more questions. Will Ferrell's goofy old man voice is too much for even this gathering of comedic actors, and practically everyone breaks at some point during the sketch. You hear me make the sound of a chipmunk? Stay real still. <laughs> how do we know what that sounds like? Oh, trust me, Joshua. You'll know. <laughs> <laughs> Gus doesn't need to do any panning, because this sketch is straight up gold. Number 3. More Cowbell Speaking of Will Ferrell breaking everyone, this is one of the most famous SNL sketches of all time for just that reason. I put my pants on, just like the rest of you, one leg at a time. Except, once my pants are on, I make gold records. <laughs> In a recording session for Blue Oyster Cult's Don't Fear the Reaper, fictional band member Gene Frankel, played by Farrell, goes ham on playing the cowbell during the song. Far from being upset about it, producer Bruce Dickinson, played by Christopher Walken, just wants to hear more of it. To be honest, fellas, it was sounding great, but... I could have used a little more cowbell. Farrell's enthusiastic performance and tight t-shirt, as well as Walken's deadpan delivery of increasingly ridiculous lines, leave everyone else struggling to keep the laughter in. Guess what? I got a fever. And the only prescription is more cowbell. And for the record, we've tried to get doctors to prescribe more cowbell for fevers, but no luck. 
they think they know better than the Bruce Dickinson? Number 2. Debbie Downer, Disney World The very first appearance of the eponymous Debbie Downer, this sketch sees the character join a family reunion at Disney World. You guys here on a special occasion? Well, we're here on that new Magical Gatherings family package. Got the whole Matusik clan down from Ohio, right guys? Say hi! Despite the happy surroundings, Debbie can't help but bring the mood down with dire commentary on world events. I guess Roy isn't doing as well as they first thought. <laughs> what? Who's Roy? Roy of Siegfried and Roy? He was attacked by his own tiger and suffered devastating injuries. However, in contrast to Debbie's grim remarks, actress Rachel Dratch and everyone else in the scene can't stop breaking. Part of this was due to Dratch messing up a line early, setting everyone off, but the frequent wah-wah sound effects were used for the first time in the live show, catching the actors all off guard. By the way, it's official. I can't have children! Host Lindsay Lowen claims she ran off stage because she couldn't keep it together. We can't blame her. Number 1. The Californians This recurring soap opera sketch is guaranteed to have multiple actors break character. Devin? What are you doing here? The over-the-top drama of soap operas, paired with dialogue mostly centered on Southern California's roads and freeways, which is delivered with nearly incomprehensible Valley Girl accents, is a recipe for hilarity. I tried to go through to Westwood, but my GPS put me on Beverly Glen, and I didn't want to end up in Encino. The sketch's most recurring actors, Bill Hader, Kristen Wiig, and Fred Armisen, are the most frequent cast to break, though they're far from the only ones. And everyone, just help yourself to some dried... <laughs> Just seeing them make goofy faces in the mirror is enough to get us rolling, so it's impressive they make it through any of the dialogue. No one will ever be able to match Robin Williams' lightning wit, and so it's no surprise that he often had the whole cast in fits of laughter. She woke up and got like, oh, is that you? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the funniest moments when Robin Williams induced unscripted or unplanned laughter from the cast and crew. Well, surely you must be the son of God. <laughs> Number 10, cracking up with Philip Seymour Hoffman, Patch Adams. A seasoned pro of the screen, Philip Seymour Hoffman starred in many notable dramas and even won the Oscar in 2006 for playing Truman Capote. I'm so sorry. I've been away. Point is, he doesn't seem like the type of actor who would break easily. Yet he and Robin Williams were having the time of their lives on the set of Patch Adams. Hi, Patch Adams. Mitch Roman. to Georgetown University. I was awarded the William F. Thompson <laughs> Scientific Treatment Award. <laughs> Hoffman and Williams just can't seem to get through the scene in which Mitch introduces himself to Patch. They incessantly giggle like a couple of teenagers on a mind-altering substance, and they can't make it two sentences without breaking. I was awarded the William F. Thompson Scientific. <laughs> <laughs> I hate this part. <laughs> you always do that. We wish we were on set that day. It seemed like a good time. This isn't right. Not at these prices. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, here we go. Last time. This is it. Number 9. The Broadcasts. Good Morning Vietnam. Robin Williams earned his first Oscar nomination for playing Adrian Cronauer, an armed forces DJ who keeps morale high during the Vietnam War. Good morning, Vietnam! Adrian's hilarious broadcasts were largely improvised by Williams, with producer Mark Johnson saying they, quote, just let the cameras roll. It's 0600. What's the O stand for? Oh my God, it's early. What resulted was cinematic magic with many people losing their composure both in front of and behind said cameras. There's also a scene where Adrian breaks from the radio and entertains a group of GIs in person. Hey, we'd like to welcome you to Vietnam, the country that is more stimulating than a strong cup of cappuccino or an espresso enema. Many of these extras did not speak English, yet they still laughed at William's physical mannerisms, and their genuine laughter was included in the film. Oh, quick newsflash, former President Eisenhower, actually cartoon character Elmer Fudd. He was quoted as saying, 
Thank you, America. It was fun being present. <laughs> Number eight, Slipping on the Floor, The Birdcage. One of Williams' more underrated comedies, The Birdcage contains one of the funniest scenes in his filmography. And it's not thanks to the script, but Williams himself. You've got to get in there. Everything is going to hell. You didn't make an entree. What? What do what, 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 you... What do you, you mean? Just have soup? But your peasant soup is an entree. It's like a stew. What do you think I put so much in it for? Shut up! Armand, Val, and Agador are panicking inside a kitchen, and Armand eventually slips on the floor. Shut up! Williams genuinely slipped and fell, and Armand telling Agador that he was all right was actually Williams informing Hank Azaria. It's okay. We're all right. Funnily enough, Williams is the one who breaks from this mistake. While the other two are mostly successful in keeping a straight face, it's Williams who briefly giggles while desperately trying to stay in character. What are you standing there for? Go! Go! She'll be here in a minute! Go! Number 7. Making Ben Stiller Laugh – Night at the Museum Robin Williams clearly had a penchant for making even the most professional of actors laugh. He stars alongside screen veteran Ben Stiller in Night at the Museum, playing a living wax sculpture of Theodore Roosevelt. Climb aboard, boy! Take the hand, son. One scene required Stiller to kneel over Williams as he lay in the snow, and for some reason it brought out the giggles. This I'm fine. All we have to do now is to do something because half the museum's running amok. I'm sorry. <laughs> They're barely able to string three words together without laughing, and at one point, director Sean Levy can be heard telling them to quote take a breath. Stiller's little jig does nothing to help, and he breaks again forcing Levy to finally call cut. Cut it! Cut. We don't blame Stiller, we'd be laughing too. Number 6. Farting – Patch Adams We return to the medical comedy for the most universal form of humor – that of a good, loud fart. The camera is slowly panning into Williams when he lets loose, forcing an immediate breaking of character from everyone around him. <laughs> Stop. Monica Potter smiles and looks a bit disgusted while Daniel London immediately laughs and turns to a slightly embarrassed Williams. Stop. And while we don't see Philip Seymour Hoffman's reaction, he's clearly grinning when the camera pans back to him. Williams doesn't even have to open his mouth to get everyone around him laughing. Such is the connective power of a good toot. Number 5. Making Elmo Cringe – Sesame Street Robin Williams starred multiple times on Sesame Street, often bearded and wearing both a baseball cap and a colorful shirt. What are you going to do with that stick? Oh, Elmo, there's lots of things you can do with this stick. You can start off, you can be playing baseball in the World Series, <laughs> hit it over the fence and realize, I'm the one! He appeared during the 1991 special Big Bird's Birthday or Let Me Eat Cake, showing Elmo the imaginative power of a simple stick. The 2018 documentary Robin Williams' Come Inside My Mind contains outtakes from this segment, and they are every bit as enjoyable as you would think. Maybe it could be like a baton. There you are, conducting a full orchestra. Thank you, Madonna, for that lovely lingerie melody. I better go back. We'll never be able to do that. <laughs> I realize. The clips ooze with charm, as Williams makes the crew laugh with his silly antics. The funniest part comes when Elmo accidentally calls him Mr. Robbins, prompting a great reaction that warms the heart and soothes the soul. Oh, thank you, Mr. Robbins. Mr. Robbins? <laughs> Taking the stick back, Elmo. <laughs> Number 4. Laughing with Robert De Niro – Awakenings Not to belabor the he makes seasoned pros laugh point, but come on, this is Robert freaking De Niro we're talking about here. Now, Len, if you could turn this way, please. It's a camera called a Polaroid. Thank you. In fact, De Niro earned an Oscar nomination for playing encephalitis patient Leonard Lowe, proving that he was at the top of his game on set. Yet he couldn't help but laugh alongside his co-star. William stumbles during one scene, leading to a prolonged joke in which he starts doing another voice. It's an idea before it's time, but let's try it. I've wanted to talk like this for the entire movie. <laughs> this voice makes De Niro laugh even harder, and to be honest, we don't think we've ever seen him like that. De Niro has always seemed like a very serious person, yet here he is belly laughing with the rest of us. <laughs> Lenny and I have an idea. Number 3. Making Everyone Laugh – Whose Line Is It Anyway? It's hard to name the funniest segment in Whose Line history, but may we suggest scenes from a hat with Robin Williams? I'm paranoid! God! Williams was on fire the whole episode, elevating the energy and effort from everyone else. 
but he really shines during scenes from a hat. It's just wall-to-wall -wall hilarity, and the laughter literally never stops for three and a half minutes. Is this the loved one? All right, start the truck, Johnny! Wow, look at him move! <laughs> Isn't that incredible, ladies and gentlemen? With just six volts, you can make your relatives dance again! The audience is clearly having the time of their lives, and the other performers are often doubled over in laughter. Even the inscrutable Colin Mockery laughs on more than one occasion, even though he's the one usually causing the breaking. Oh, to have been in that audience. Who's your daddy? <laughs> Number two, Stuck in the Floor, Jumanji. 90s kids may remember the visual of Alan Parrish being stuck in the wooden attic floor, the unfortunate result of playing the titular Jumanji. That was very quick thinking. Sarah and I would like to get out of the floor. Even having his face stuck inside a prop floor isn't enough to stop Williams from bringing the heat. Bonnie Hunt gets the giggles acting alongside Williams' face, and frankly, we don't blame her. It'd be quite hard taking that visual seriously. <laughs> Do I have that effect on you? No, no. What? It's something else. What is it? Nothing. It's not Catholic, is it? No, it's what? nothing to do with a dead relative or anything. It's just it's <laughs> Williams keeps the laughs and smiles coming, making jokes about religion, crafting stupid puns, and screaming in her face for no reason. What? I just felt I should do that. <laughs> and yes, just like Patch Adams, there's even a fart. Hearing voices. It's okay, I just farted. Let's do that one again, okay? The farting part. Number 1. The Fart Story – Good Will Hunting Okay, so Robin Williams clearly had a thing for farting. Even a comedic genius such as him found value in it. My wife used to fart when she was nervous. Good Will Hunting is one of Williams' most serious roles, playing the grieving Sean McGuire. But he still finds time to squeak in a good fart joke. She used to fart in her sleep. <laughs> Sean tells Will a funny anecdote about his late wife tooting in her sleep, and the entire bit was ad-libbed by Williams. <laughs> One night it was so loud it woke the dog up. Will's reaction is genuine laughter from Matt Damon, and legend has it that the camera operator also chuckled, causing the screen to subtly shake. Not only is the speech hilarious, it also adds a beautifully and oddly touching dimension to Sean's character. Such was the genius of Robin Williams. Those are the things I miss the most. What joke had you laughing the hardest? Quite something very, very amazing, really funny. Will Ferrell has an irresistible charm that audiences have flocked to for decades now. And you just know that he's had his fellow castmates in stitches. Well, here's the proof. Do I amuse you? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the most gut-busting moments when Will Ferrell brought about unplanned laughter from the cast and crew. Oh, cinnamon and gravy! <laughs> Number 10. Oversharing at the dinner table. The other guys. If you ever thought that Will Ferrell might be actively trying to make his co-stars laugh, you're not wrong. Exhibit A. This dinner scene in the action comedy film The Other Guys. When Farrell and Ava Mendez's characters have Mark Wahlberg's Detective Terry over for dinner, the conversation takes a hilarious turn. Farrell decides to discuss a medical procedure Mendez's character had. It's here that he throws out a hilarious bit of information, that the doctor working on her compared the experience to, quote, operating on a German shepherd with hip dysplasia. The doctor said it was similar to uh, operating on a German shepherd uh, when they have uh, hip dysplasia. <laughs> The blooper shows that Mendez can't hold it together for long, and we don't blame her. I'm not oh, a professional, I can't do this right now. Number 9. Short Shorts, Saturday Night Live How hard was it to try not to laugh while working alongside Will Ferrell on a live TV sketch series? Turns out, near impossible. I apologize, I apologize. Uh, why don't you guys continue the meeting? In this sketch, which took place a month following the attacks on America in 2001, a group of office workers are encouraged to wear clothes showing their patriotism. Of course, Will Ferrell's character takes things a little too far. Emphasis on the little. The U.S. of A. is the greatest country on the face of the earth, and for that, I will make no apologies. It's said that Farrell made the decision to make his short shorts even shorter, going into thong territory right before airtime. This bit of improvisation took his castmates by surprise and had nearly everyone holding back their laughter. Uh, here's the situation. We, uh, here's the 
situation we find ourselves in. Number 8. Chip, Talladega Nights, The Ballad of Ricky Bobby. What is it about Will Ferrell at a dinner table that's just so amusing? As NASCAR racer Ricky Bobby, Ferrell is full of arrogance and hubris. I had no idea you'd gotten experimental surgery to have your balls removed. <laughs> He's also got two spoiled brat kids. During a particular dinner loaded with branded food from Ricky's sponsors, the kids start to mouth off to their grandfather Chip, played by actor Ted Mason. I threw a bunch of Grandpa Chip's war medals off the bridge. When Gramps takes offense and asks Ricky if he's going to allow this behavior from his children, Farrell takes the opportunity to join in on the maltreatment. His emphatic Chip completely breaks John C. Riley. I sure as hell am, Chip! Chip! Surprisingly, Mason remains stone-faced throughout, only adding to the hilarity. Number 7. Majestic Wolf Lamp – Step Brothers Adam McKay's Step Brothers follows two grown man babies who go from enemies to family members when their single parents marry each other. Will Ferrell and his longtime collaborator John C. Riley play the colossally immature step siblings to perfection. You better not go to sleep. As soon as your eyes shut, I'm gonna punch you square in the face. I hope you stay still when you sleep, because I'm putting a rat trap between your legs. Maybe a little too well. During a scene where Farrell's Brennan shows Riley's Gale one of his most prized possessions, things get super silly super fast. The item is a majestic wolf lamp, and Farrell riffs on the names of the wolves featured on it. This is Galco, which is Hebrew for kindness. Galco? Gal <laughs> From throwing out Galco to explaining why the wolf pup is nameless, Farrell causes Riley to break out into giggles with each take. Pup is unnamed because you can't put a name on the innocence of that face. <laughs> We're right there with you, John. Number 6. Throw Me Some Chicken – Blades of Glory in the mid-2000s, Will Ferrell took part in a series of sports comedies, one such being Blades of Glory. Here, Ferrell plays Chaz Michael Michaels, a washed-up figure skater who looks to make a comeback by teaming up with his former rival. Just thought you'd like to see what a skater's body really looks like. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, drink it in. Don't be shy. Looking's for free. Touching's gonna cost you something. The film's blooper reel is full of plenty of amusing offerings, including one where Farrell's character goes to exit a scene with Rob Corddry by making a sound effect with his mouth. Of course not. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't do the sound effect. <laughs> Another sees Will on a treadmill asking for chicken to be thrown his way. Throw some chicken! With his mouth full and more pieces of chicken coming at him, it becomes too much for the crew and they have no choice but to let out their laughs. <laughs> Number 5. The Lovas – Saturday Night Live Jimmy Fallon was notorious for breaking character during his time on SNL, but he's not the only one who gets the giggles in this sketch. While enjoying a relaxing soak in a hot tub, Fallon's Dave encounters a strange couple. Is this your first time at the Welshley Arms Hotel? Uh, yeah. Mm, and, and are you here without a lover? Played by Will Ferrell and Rachel Dratch, the pair begins to speak in odd accents and spew bizarre yet poetic dialogue. Farrell's delivery is more than enough to send Fallon over the edge with laughter, so much so that he's barely able to get his lines out. Dave, 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 David. <laughs> his laughter is soon followed by Drew Barrymore and then Farrell and Dratch themselves. What can we say? It was a perfect comedy stew, one that Will Farrell stirred with hilarious precision. Was it in our minds? We don't know. <laughs> Number 4. More Cowbell – Saturday Night Live This SNL sketch is so iconic, it's widely considered the funniest of all time. And that's saying something. A big part of its appeal is Will Ferrell's hilarious performance. In a recording session of Don't Fear the Reaper by Blue Oyster Cult, Will's character is given free reign to play his cowbell wildly. Naturally, Farrell goes all out with the instrument, and in doing so, causes mostly everyone involved to fight back a laughing fit. Add in the fact that Will's snug shirt keeps riding up, and it all proves too much. 
pretty much sending Jimmy Fallon into stitches. Don't blow this for us, Gene! Quit being, quit being so selfish, Gene. Can I just say one thing? Say it, baby, just say it. I'm staring here, staring at rock legend Bruce Dickinson. The cock in a walk, baby. And if Bruce Dickinson wants more cowbell, we should probably give him more cowbell. Say it, baby. And hey, we have loved the sound of a cowbell ever since. Number three, Mrs. Buttersworth. Anchorman 2, The Legend Continues. In the second installment of the smash hit comedy film Anchorman, Will Ferrell's Ron Burgundy becomes severely depressed after suffering a head injury. Ah! Oh. Oh my God, Ron! Ron! Open up, buddy, guys. Will somebody call an ambulance? Do not die in front of us! Unable to read the news due to losing his sight, Ron isolates himself in a lighthouse. It's here that he's visited by his former news buds, Paul Rudd's Brian, David Koechner's Champ, and Steve Carell's Brick. During the drop-in, Burgundy goes into some not-safe-for-work details about the only thing giving him pleasure during this dark time. Let's just say it involves maple syrup mascot Mrs. Butterworth, or as he calls her, Mrs. Buttersworth. She got me there like I was on the express A-train. Bing, bang, boom. Farrell's subsequent onslaught of crude humor is delivered with such accuracy that poor Paul Rudd can barely contain himself. Now I know what the villagers of Pompeii felt like. <laughs> now I know what those sad villagers of Pompeii felt like. Number two, feel it in my plums, eastbound and down. Did you know Will Ferrell guest starred as an arrogant car salesman in the first season of HBO's Eastbound and Down? Well, thanks to his epic cameo as character Ashley Schaefer, we were gifted one of the funniest outtakes of all time. I can feel the tension in the air. <laughs> <laughs> in a scene with Danny McBride and Craig Robinson, Ferrell talks about feeling tension in the air. Where can he feel the tension? Well, in his plums, of course. Hey! That plum looks good. You, can I trade it for your Twinkie? No, these are my plums. I want to bite into that plum and let the juice spill down my chin. You know what I mean? All the while, everyone's saying... I want the juice to spill down... <laughs> Farrell's descriptive word choices send McBride and Robinson into giggle overdrive. If I recall correctly... If I recall correctly... My plums, beautiful bluish hue. The sun just dancing right off of them, just nice. Getting ready to take them to market. <laughs> I could feel it down in my plums. <laughs> I could feel it down in my plums. You're getting a nice bluish hue. Getting ready to take them to the farmer's market. The uncontrolled laughs keep coming when Will Schaefer starts talking about a passionate night he had with his wife Donna. It is the stuff of outtake heaven. He needs to learn the way I learned from my father. The way he learned from his father. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, Gus Chiggins, Saturday Night Live. I'm sorry, the last, the last name again? The last name is Chiggins. C-H-I. G G I N S. Chiggins. And I thought my hearing was bad. Easy, Gus. Oh, I'll beat you. Can you believe that one of Will Ferrell's funniest moments on Saturday Night Live didn't even make it to air? Yep, cut for time. The Gus Chiggins old prospector sketch was relegated to being a bonus offering on Will Ferrell's Best of SNL DVD. Oh, cinnamon and gravy. <laughs> The sketch sees Gus, an old prospector, being announced as part of a military operation that's set to ship out. As so I've said before, a hundred times before, each unit has been assigned an old prospector. Okay? Guys, this is an unconventional war. End of story. No explanation, all right? We're just going to have to deal with it. Unsurprisingly, the other men have concerns. 
Will Ferrell's absurd mannerisms and line delivery completely break the cast one by one. It's truly side-splitting stuff as everyone tries to hide their giggles after Ferrell's dialogue. So just follow me and my lantern, all right? And if you hear me make the sound of a chipmunk, stay real still. How do we know what that sounds like? Oh, trust me, Joshua. You'll know. <laughs> Guys, don't look at me. Remember, this is an unconventional war. Of course, there's no stopping the laughs when Will Ferrell's involved. My wife can't have chicken! I stopped eating anything that can talk! But if you watched the show, you would know this! I told you she outgrew these C words! And cut! That was awesome, you guys. Great. Thanks that for doing great. that, guys. All right, well, that's going to do it for this special look at bloopers and all the time someone broke the cast. Hope you enjoyed yourself. I definitely did. I've been Matt from Watch Mojo, and I'll see you next time.